evidence for a chemical reaction. I believe we did this in lab, didn't we? Or was that the other class? Yeah, I think we did. So we, we talked about there's different um, things that we can see, that we can detect with our senses without scientific instruments or anything that give us a clue that a reaction has happened. Um, we need those clues because we can't see what the atoms and molecules are doing. If we could see them, we could tell. You know, if they were as big as Lego blocks, we could see what's happening. We would see that atoms are combining with other atoms to form compounds. We would see that the starting molecules are coming apart, that they're no longer the same, and that new molecules are forming. So the atoms are, are being rearranged. But we can't see that. And so we depend on um, clues. One clue is color change. So if you mix two substances and the color changes, that's a clue that a chemical reaction may have occurred. It's not an absolute that every time there's a color change, the, uh, there's a chemical reaction. But it's an indication of that's a good, good possibility. So you may have seen these, these little spoons for feeding babies. And if you stick them in food that's too warm, that's going to burn your baby's mouth, the spoon changes color and lets you know, hey, dummy, you're going to hurt your baby. Cool that food off. Okay, That's what they're really saying. Um, why does it change color? Well, it's actually a chemical reaction. Now, when you cool that spoon down, the color goes back. Some chemical reactions are reversible. And so they can go one way, and then they can go the other way. Another indication is formation of a solid. Here they're pouring a clear yellow solution into a colorless solution, and they're forming kind of a reddish um, cloudy stuff there. What is that? We can't see through it. It's a solid. It's very small particles of a solid being formed. And so that's an indication that a chemical reaction is happening. Because the things before that were in those two beakers were soluble. And when we, when we mix them, now it's not soluble anymore. That's a chemical change. Um, formation of a gas. A lot of times you'll see that by fizzing or we heated something and we saw that water had come off and deposited on the side of the test tube. So if gas is given off, or sometimes that's um, detected as an odor that was not there before, where did the odor come from? Well, it's a gas that's being given off by the chemical reaction. And another evidence involves light or heat. So things that give off heat or absorb heat. In this example here, we have a burner burning um, probably natural gas that gives off light and heat. That's indication there's a chemical reaction happening there. One of those instant cold packs, you mix the two substances inside of it and gets cold all by itself. It's absorbing heat from the environment. Chemical reaction. Glow stick, you mix the two things inside and it gives off light. That's evidence of a chemical reaction. But we can be fooled by some of these things. If you boil water, you say, well, hey, there's, look, it's bubbling. We're evolving a gas. This must be chemical change. No. This is just boiling water. We're just changing the physical state from a solid to a liquid. And if we look at the particles, you know, if we could, we would see that they're not changing. The individual particles aren't changing. They're just spreading apart. So let's do this real quick. Which involves a chemical reaction? Butane burning in a butane lighter. Is that a chemical reaction? Yes, it is. How about butane evaporating out of a butane lighter? That's not a chemical reaction. So if you just flick the BIC, but you don't actually get it to light, the butane will slowly come out all by itself. It's just evaporating. How about wood burning? Is that a chemical reaction? Yes. How about dry ice subliming? No. That's, again, a physical state change, just going from a solid to a gas. I'll see you on Wednesday.